and will continue today to be about web design and good web design, what makes for a good web page, I suppose, and what makes for a good website. And that will sort of dovetail into a discussion of what you need to do for your project. Because um, the point that I like to make is that the qualities that we want in a website, the qualities of a website being well designed, doesn't happen by accident. That chances are you're not going to just throw something together and have it meet this meet the criteria that we define for a, a well-designed website. So therefore, we better first of all understand that criteria, and secondly, we better identify a process that we can go through to get from point A to point B. Point A being you have a problem to solve, point B being you have a finished website that actually solves the problem. So, so I'm going to refresh my memory. What are some of the qualities that we talked about last time of a well-designed website? It makes a point. Okay. You know what the website is about when you open it up. Okay. Um, has a clear message. All right. I would say that is a, a good quality of a website that you don't have to open it up and guess, gee, what is the site about? All right. So I would say that would be a good example of a quality. What else? Appropriate amount of content. Appropriate amount of content. I like that. And appropriate amount of content. And I think what that mean what you mean by that is not too much. Not too little. Especially if you're talking about one page. Right? Because whoops. I think I'm breaking it here. There we go. <laughs> Upside down, yep. other side, yeah. and back to normal. All right. Um, especially if you're talking about one page. Uh, the one site that we went over with a, um, that just had a, a sort of an avalanche of content was very difficult to find anything. You know, uh, Anything that you put on a page or on a site is potentially going to distract you from everything else on the site. And if there's some things that are more important than others, if you simply throw content upon content upon content, then you're apt to sort of lose something. You're apt to lose the clarity and apt to, to lose the important stuff. Anything else that we can think of for this? Um, the one site that we brought up that had a lot of stuff, it took longer to load. Okay. Um, Good load time. That sort of goes hand in hand with the appropriate amount of content. And the other thing I would say to do with that is to make everything on the page count. All right? In other words, I'm not suggesting, gee, don't have videos on your site because videos take a long time to load or don't have a lot of images because images take a long, si a long time to load and so on. I'm not suggesting that at all. I'm saying the images and the video and the other media that you have, make sure they count, right? If it's something that really has a big impact and really enhances the site, then by all means, put a big image on your page. All right, but if it's something like a little silly animation just for uh, decoration or something like that, then you're better off um, you're better off uh, possibly omitting it. Keeping in mind that if it's not adding much, it's probably 
detracting from the page in that it might distract people from the content that does matter. So load time, of course, now is a much different issue than it was, you know, even a few years back. You know, internet speeds are, are getting faster and faster. But people are then correspondingly putting more and more on their web pages, right? So this is always going to be an issue that we ought to hold in the back of our hands, uh, back of our heads, right? Because um, besides the load time, there's a potential for distraction by having too much content that really doesn't add anything to the page. Anything else? Okay, easy. Make things easier. Easy to go, easy to buy, easy to return. Okay, so if you're talking about a a um, uh, like a commerce site, like an online store, what you said is like easy. Apple. Yeah, easy to get, easy to find what you want, buy, return, etc. And go home. And go home. <laughs> right and be done. I think, I think that's one of the more main points in these days is time. Okay. Exactly. I would, I would exactly agree with you. The, the, the statement was made that one of the, one of the important things are, are time. Uh, this is something that, you know, people spend a lot of time making their websites look a certain way. Excuse me. And looking beautiful and all that. But the sad truth is people don't go to your website to admire how beautiful the website is. All right? People go to your website to get something done. Now, in the case of an e-commerce site where you're selling things, people want to do exactly as described. They want to go to your site. They want to find what they want. They want to buy it. And they want to be done so that they can go about their lives and doing things. Now, other sites might have different goals in mind for the user. right? Other sites might, uh, might be educational, right? Where maybe time is a little less critical, but on the other hand, you don't want people wasting their time on the site. You want them to be able to find what they want and access it. And they may spend more time reading if it's an educational site uh, than they would on an e-commerce site. But the point is, is that they, they don't want to waste time trying to find the things that they're interested in. They want to be able to get right to it. All right. Uh, another site might be for entertainment. And sort of the same thing there. Right? Um, on a site that's meant for entertainment, I may take my time more than on a shopping site. Right? I may want to get into there if I go to a movie site or a site about something I'm interested in that's entertaining, a sports team or whatever. I might want to take my time to immerse myself in the site and really get the entertainment out of it. But I still don't want to waste time looking for things and um, not being able to find what I want. All right? So ease in doing what you came to the site for. Now, we can also talk about the appearance of a site. What are some observations that we would want to make about the appearance of the site. One of them we mentioned last time is that appearance should make sort of the map of the site. And simply put, a serious website should look serious, a fun website should look fun. All right. Uh, knowing what the audience is into and the demographic that you are going for. A, a, uh, a heavy metal band is likely to have a black background and white font. It's almost like, can you find a heavy metal website that it does not have a black background and white font? You probably can't. All right. Someone name a metal band. Metallica. Metallica. OK, let's look them up. I'll tell you, I don't, I don't have any money. Well, I probably have a couple dollars in my pocket. But I, I'm almost willing to say I would, I would pay everyone in the classroom a certain amount of money 
if, but I don't have any money, so I won't do that. <laughs> Let's look up Metallica. If it's not black, I, would, I am going to be very surprised. Like, what do you think the chances are it's going to be, like, orange and yellow? It's going to be pink. Or pink. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just, it just sounds absurd. So let's go and look them up. Here is Metallica. Okay. Well, I'm a little surprised. But there's still a lot of black on this page. All right. Uh, How do you spell that? Uh, M-I-I don't know. M-I-I don't know, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not sure either. Uh, misfits. Misfits. Right there. Okay, already we can tell. <laughs> there we go. All right. On the other hand, if we were to do a search for Barbie, it would be surprising if it was, if it was black, if it was black right? Barbie. Of, yeah, that would be yeah. I gotta be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And again, there is it, it is light, lighter, more vivid colors, and so on. Let's go to Nickelodeon, the kids' TV show, Nickelodeon. Again, sort of goes with their brand, their logo. All right. I don't even know what shows are on Nickelodeon anymore. I, when my kids watched them, I used to know all of them. Now, I, my, now my kids are older. I don't even recognize any of these. But you can see it sort of complements that. So on, on the other hand, Apple, we talked about last time, not so much in the color scheme, but in the design is a very sleek, minimal design. The font is very sleek. The Content is sparse. Wow. What do you do with this? Oh, okay. I, dumb me, I thought this was like a three screen watch. This is three different watches. <laughs> I was going to say a three screen watch, that would really be, that would be awesome. All right. Yeah, really, really. Uh, at any rate, all of these, and again, the one that we looked at last time was the Wall Street Journal. All of these, you can, you know, you can think in your head of what the messages they're trying to get, and their 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 appearance like resonates with it. All right, we looked at the Wall Street Journal last time, which is a newspaper. The site looked like a newspaper site. Right? It didn't look like a Barbie site or a Metallica site or whatever. All right? So uh, therefore, uh, again, that, that's an important thing. Uh, it just sort of enhances the experience, you know? Um, could you imagine, you know, going into a fashion boutique and the person was wearing, um, you know, uh, just regular clothes? You know, it just, it just wouldn't really it wouldn't resonate with you. It wouldn't put you in the mood and wouldn't suggest what their overall message is. So some of those things, yeah, they're superficial. Does the content matter? If, if, you, if you look up what Metallica's tour dates are, does it matter if they're in pink or not? Not really, as far as the content goes. Yet, as far as creating a brand impression and uh, putting people in, in the mindset of their of their brand of their uh, of their message, it does matter. All right. What are some other things that we can say about the appearance of a page? You talk about the designer too. If he's a very good designer, when you go to that page, you will notice it's a very good designer person. Um. How would you notice? Just by the context and how to look. 
Okay. How easy can be. Okay. Organized. Again, you came back to the word easy. Organized is one of the things that the easiness should appear in. When a subject is organized, what does that mean regarding our experience for it? Or with it? Okay. Okay. If it's well easy to find what you are looking for. And things like clearly go together. Appropriate amount of content, not too much, not too little. That helps with the organization and helps make it easier to find what you're looking for. Anything else about about the, the site. What about the colors of the site? We already said they should sort of match the intent of the site. What else about them? The colors need to be blend with one another to be a match. All right. You don't want to have a, a purple, well, maybe you do want to have a purple and a red, but you know, normally you're going to have colors that blend together. Okay, colors blend. I'll say that a couple ways. For one thing, there's the readability of them. So an orange uh, text on a yellow background, it almost doesn't matter how it looks. You're probably not going to be able to read it, right? You might say, wow, that looks great, but oh, wait a minute, those are words, all right, that you're supposed to read. So you'd want it to be leg legible. Um, how, how many colors do you want to use? Two. Pardon me? Two. Two? Three, I think, was the number you gave us. Three? I will use all that I can use to look pretty. Okay. But it possibly depends on what you're doing, like what the site is for. It would depend on what you're doing. All right, what about this? What about using one color? Every, every piece of, every piece of, you know, we, we just have a black, a white background with black everything else, black fonts, black borders, and so on. What's wrong with that? Really very boring. That's a Windows 98, and nobody would like that page. Okay, it's going to be boring. It's not going to be visually appealing. That's true. Pardon me. Yeah. Even Wall Street Journal used a few different colors, though, if you remember. What else would happen if it's it's all besides the fact that it's boring? Besides the emotional response that you have, and I'm not disagreeing with that, but you don't know what is important. You lose uh, emphasis. Yeah, you lose emphasis because we use colors for a couple of reasons on websites. We use colors to, number one, to convey a mood. We use colors to make sure it's readable, all right? But we also use colors to set things apart, all right? So if you have a page of, of black print, uh, only black print on a white background, then nothing sort of stands out at you. But could you imagine if you had a site with all black print, but one thing was in red? Where does your eyes immediately go to? It knows that there's something different about that. All right. One of the assumptions that people make is, is just built into our brain, I think, um, is that if we see things that look alike, our mind organizes them together. And if all the text was black on a page, we're just going to see sort of one mush of a whole bunch of content. Whereas if we see a couple of things on, in red, those are going to stand out to us. And we're going to see them as being, well, those two things in our mind, we're going to group them together. All right? What would be wrong about using 83 colors on a page? Everything tries to stand out. Everything tries to be important. Therefore, nothing is important. All right? So what you want to find is you want to find a good mix between not too few and not too many. All right? Now, your point about using as many colors as you can to make it look good, that's true. All right? If you include the colors that are in your images and your colors maybe on, uh, on some other elements on the page. But if we're mainly talking about text, 
Uh, you still want to use it to look attractive. All right? You don't want it to just be one blob. But you want to do it in a meaningful way so that we're conveying to the user with color a sort of organization all right? and a sort of grouping together of stuff. What other things can you do to sort of set things apart on your page besides changing their color? Yeah, change the type. Make it bold, change the font. Yes? Give you shadows, like, uh, like the title, you know what I mean? You can give you shadows. Okay. Backwards. Absolutely. You can do some visual effects, like a border, a shadow, things like that, set it apart. Images, animations. Page. It, images possibly animations. That's in page 200. <laughs> okay, on page 200 of your book, take a look to see how to do that. All right. The, th the thing is, is when we're learning these CSS techniques, we're not learning them so we can show them off. We're not learning them so that the person on our page is going to look at it and say, wow, this person really studied CSS well. All right. What we want, the reaction we want is, wow, this page is really well organized and I can find what it is. I, I sometimes say that a web designer is almost like a referee in a basketball game, right? If a referee is doing a good job, you don't almost notice that they're there, right? You only notice a referee when they are potentially doing a bad job, all right? Now I realize that's subjective depending on who you're rooting for and all that, but for the most part, the referee is doing their job, you don't really think about them too much. Web designers sort of like that. You go to a page, as a user, anyhow, not necessarily as a web designer, but you don't know, you, you can't necessarily put your finger on why this page is well designed, all right? You just know that I'm going to go to that page because I can get the results that I want easily. And all the things that you, that, that you do as a web designer is there not just to make it look attractive, but to add usability to the page as well. So the use of different fonts, the use of different size fonts, different color fonts, uh, borders, shadows, all those things are used in a meaningful way. And they also are used in somewhat of a sparing way. Getting back to what was said before, if we used 83 colors, then everything is going to look different than everything else. And we're not going to have any cohesion, and we're not going to know from page to page what's important and what's not. You know, oh, wait a minute, violet means it's important. Let me find violet among these 63 other colors. No, if everything's black and one thing's violet, then it stands out. Okay? So, here's the interesting thing about most of these rules. And we could add to this, and I don't want to do all of this because this is part of your assignment right, for next week, so uh, I think for next week. So I don't necessarily want to go over every single aspect of this, all right? But I think we have a good start and a good introduction. Because if we look at these things, easy to find, clear message, not too much, not too little content, ability, and Colors and other techniques affect the organization of a page. The appearance goes along with the message. It's organized. All these things relate to one main point, is that the key to good web design is a good web design. This is Zeller's definition. I don't know. Maybe other people have said it too, but... This is pretty much my definition. A good web design is one that supports the goals of the organization and the user. And I'll say users. Because there's more than one user, right? I hope so. We have already a page to do all that stuff and nobody never talk about it. Which one's that? Lorraine County Community College. You oh. go there, it's simple, it's easy to use, and it's everything in there. Okay. 
LC's web page is held up as an example. All right. Um, anyone agree or disagree with that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I go ahead. For for me, there's no pros and cons. I would agree that it's a great website as far as being able to find something if that's what you're wanting to find. But sometimes simple things like the phone number of how to get to career services if I wanted to call them is a very difficult maneuverability to try and find that information. Uh, and the search element doesn't really give you that very well. I I would I would. I'm going to be a diplomat today. I would sort of agree with what everyone has said. Uh, and I would especially agree with what you said that, you know, websites generally aren't good or bad. You know, most websites exist somewhere in the middle, right? You could probably find a few websites that you say, wow, that's a great website. And you could probably find some websites that say, wow, that's a horrible website. And then there's probably most of them that are right in the middle somewhere. That they got some good, they have, they have some good, they have some bad. All right. Uh, so I think there's things that they've done well on the website. And I think there's a lot of things that need improvement on the website. Uh, with the thought in mind that a website is one that helps you achieve your goals, I think if you have certain goals, another way to put this would be if you have some goals, the site works for you. If you have other goals, it doesn't work for you uh, to, to sort of bring that definition out uh, for this. So that would be my take on it. I'm going to not disagree with anything anyone has said, right? Just to point out that those viewpoints you know, how do I want to say it? You're not contradicting each other, uh, even though you're disagreeing. What you're talking about is your own experience trying to get your goals solved. And LC site, in my mind, works for some goals, doesn't work for others. <coughs> um, I should consider running for office after, uh, <laughs> after that statement. No, no, that would, that, that's never going to happen. Uh, all right. So, let's talk about then designing your project. Because if this is a good website, if this is the definition of a well-designed website, that a good web design is one that supports the goals of the organization and the users, then there's not going to be a magic formula to give us this site. Right? There's not going to be like, oh, well, in that case, we'll use Helvetica and Arial on it and, you know, and use black and white font and, you know, there's no magic formula. That's another important concept is when we talk about good web design, we have to be talking about a design for a specific problem and specific content. We looked at several websites today, The Misfits, Wall Street Journal we looked at last time, Nickelodeon, Barbie. If we were to rotate those designs and give The Misfits Nickelodeon's design and Wall Street Journal Metallica's design and so on and so forth, none of those designs would work. And they, yet they may all be good designs for the product that they were designed for originally. So, let's look at what you're required to do in this, for this semester project. First thing to note is the problem is 
is to be turned in in two pieces. The first piece is due on Halloween, October 31st. I'll have to decide if I want to dress up for Halloween this year. I have done it before. I will. I you will? Every year okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have some thoughts. I've done it two years here. Uh, not two years in a row. I did it, well, it doesn't matter when I did it. Uh, but anyhow, I have to decide. Anyhow, your project design is due that day. The project completed is due December 5th. So you have two portions to the, to, to the project. The overview is defined here. You're going to create a small website, and I'm not going to read this to you because I hate when people read things to me. Pick a topic you like. You should have fun with this, all right? Have fun, and that's an order, right? You should have fun with it. So I make it open-ended. Um, it, it, you know, it, it makes sense. You, you know, I, for one thing, it's a lot of fun for me, believe it or not, grading your projects. This is my favorite thing to grade of, of anything that I have to grade is, is the semester project in this class just because I see a variety of people's interests, <coughs> topics I know nothing about, and it's interesting to see the content. The other thing is, is it's kind of motivational for you. Um, I had one guy that did uh, a website about his motorcycles. Well, he loved his motorcycles. He wasn't about to put pictures of his motorcycle on a poorly designed web page. He just would not disrespect his, his, his motorcycles by doing that. So he's very motivated to do a good job on it. So that's great. All right, so pick a topic. It's possible to pick a topic that is either too broad or too narrow. All right, but the good news is, is that we can either shrink the topic or expand the topic to make it fit. All right, so if you were to tell me I'm going to do a site about music, wow, that's way too broad, right? You know, because there's classical, jazz, pop, hip-hop, rock, heavy metal, punk. There's music from each different country. There's music from each different era. So to say you're going to do a project about music is way too broad. So we can narrow that down. You're going to do a website about 80s punk bands, for example. All right, that's something that you might be able to get your head around and develop a, a site for. All right. The guide is that the final project should contain six to eight pages. So can you adequately describe music in six to eight pages? No, not even close. Maybe you could do a website about 80s punk band in six to eight pages, though. Now, on the other hand, <coughs> um, you know, you could say, I'm going to do a website about the kind of picks that Jimi Hendrix used. I don't even know if he used picks, all right? But let's pretend he did. Well, gee, you might be able to form one interesting page about that, but I doubt that there's enough information out there to justify six to eight pages. So, okay, you're not going to cover Jimi Hendrix's guitar picks, you'll cover Jimi Hendrix's equipment. All right? Well, that will give you six to eight pages. All right? Because you can talk about his guitars, his amplifiers, you know, and so on. All right. So, you're allowed to talk to me about the project before you turn in the design. In fact, you're encouraged to do that. All right? You're encouraged to talk to me about it about before the design. Yes? Uh, is six pages to uh, the first one, right? Repeat that. It's going to be only six pages for the first part? Well, the first part you're going to describe everything that you're going to have. You're just going to say, and then the final project you're going to go and do those. All right. Okay. 
you're going to you let's let's fit let's talk about the design and what you need to do for the design and keep in mind that your finished project where you're going to turn in in December 5th is going to have 6 to 8 pages also the first one the the, the project part 1 is not to be 6 pages project first one is a description of what is going to be on those 6 pages okay. All right. Uh, yeah, it's it's sort of an outline. Okay. All right, and the final project is the final version of all those pages, in the completed pages. All right. Now, I want you to follow a process in developing these. All right, because the process in designing these is as important as the final product that you have. All right. Six to eight page website is a small website, but it's better to practice these skills on a small website than to practice them on a gigantic website. So therefore, we're going to practice on a six to eight page website. All right, let's look at what you're going to do for the design of this. You're going to create a document that is a Word document, Word or other, a PDF would fine too. I'm not tied to a Word document. But you're going to create a document that has five sections in it. And the sections are listed over here in the navigation. Strategy, scope, structure, wireframe, prototype. The rubric is a description of how you're going to be scored. The first section is the strategy section. And the strategy section is one of the most important sections of the whole process. Because this is where you define, define exactly what you are going to do. All right? If we go by this definition, that a well-designed website, a good website, is one that supports the goals of the organization and the users, we better have identified what those goals are. All right? And we better identify who our users are. Sort of a fundamental rule for any sort of communication is to know who your audience is. All right? Because who your audience is is definitely going to affect what you're going to have on the site. All right? And it also is going to affect how you're going to present that information. So you want to know what those goals are, and you want to know who your audience is. And you also want to think about what the goals of the organization is, are. Why are you creating this site? All right? And again, there's liable to be multiple reasons. Now, the reasons that you're creating the site ought to at least correspond to, in some degree, the reasons why users are visiting your site. So, oops. Goals are not things like the site should be user friendly, or the site should be accessible, or the site should have clear navigation, right? Those are just basic web design principles. Like, Every site should have good navigation. So you shouldn't include that as one of your goals. The goals are why people are visiting your site. All right? And no matter how clever you are, no one is visiting your site to see what a great navigation you've written. All right? They're not. They're going to use your navigation, and they want it to be good, but that's not the goal. That's not the purpose that people come to your site. 
people come to your site to get to the content that is on your site or to, to do the functionality that your site makes available. An old rule of web design is content is king. All right? That, with a good design, makes for a good website. So here's what your, your strategy section is going to contain. It's going to contain a description of your site's topic and purpose. So you're going to write a paragraph to say, I am going to do a website about late 70s American punk bands. Okay? So that might be the topic. All right? And you might go into more detail about that. I'm doing this site for an average music listener. All right? Someone who may or may not be familiar with these bands, but maybe someone that has heard a band once or has heard someone talk about a band and wants to explore information about these bands. All right? As opposed to, I'm doing this site for musicians that want to learn how to play like these bands do. Or I'm doing this site for teenagers versus I'm doing this site for adults, and so on. So when you state the site's general topic and purpose, you're going to talk a little bit about what your proposed audience is. All right. If I do a website about classical music, it makes, it's going to make a big difference if my target is classical musicians versus high school students, right? Versus grade school students versus adults. Beginner musicians versus expert musicians, and so on. So the audience sort of completes a topic. All right, so have a sense of who you're doing the, audio, the, the, the site for and what your topic is. And again, we can narrow it down or make it broader depending on what you come up with. The next thing is three personas. What is a persona? Well, it's bad, it's people. I don't know. I don't okay. <laughs> All right. It's people. That's a good definition. It's an example of what one of your, if you're designing this for users or for the organization, it would be someone that you are creating that would represent that particular aspect of Okay. It. Yeah, so basically that and then you're trying to navigate your existing site from their perspective. Okay, absolutely. A lot of times in software development and web development, we talk about the user, all right? as though there's one kind of person that's out there using our website. All right? Well, that's not true. Any website that you can think of has many potential users. Let me phrase that. Not, and I, but when I say that, I don't mean many individuals, which it should, but I'm talking about many types of users. And <clears throat> ideally, we would design our website to work for every person on Earth. Well, that's impossible, right? We can't account for 7 billion people's goals. But we can define some representative groups of people and have those people in mind as we're developing our site. Because those people will help us decide things like navigation and appearance of the page and content and things like that. So you come up with a certain number of personas. For your project, Given the size of the project, I'm asking you to do three personas, all right? And that's three representative groups that are, are going to be visiting your website. So let's do, let's do uh, an exercise. What are some personas that might be visiting the college website? What are some typical types of users that might be visiting a college's web, a community college's website? Okay, what, what did you, repeat that please? Potential students, exactly. What is another type? 
parents. What is another type persona? Current students. What is another type? Professors. And I'll include in that other employees. Although really they might be two different personas, right? I use the website differently than um, you know someone that was an administrative assistant or something. But for for this sake, we'll lump them together. What would be another persona? Community members. Another persona. Customers? How are those different than these? Okay. No, I, I didn't mean that. I, I clarify, because you could, you could, there could be another type that were, could be another type or two that we're missing that you could call customers, I suppose. Um, let me just throw a few out. Transfer students? Transient students. A transient student is a student that is not transferring here, but they might take a course here like during the summer. So you might be going to Cleveland State, for example. Or well, actually, Cleveland State is a bad example because they're also in this area. You might be going to school uh, in Texas, all right, and you're back home for the summer. Well, you might be able to take a course at LC during the summer. You're still enrolled at the University of Texas, but you're going to take a course here in the summer to fulfill one of your requirements over there. That's called a transient student. It's a little different than a transfer student who, like, finishes up at one school and is going to start at this school. Uh, job seekers. Okay. Um, that's a that's a good one. Um, let's say uh, um, patrons. I guess a good word. Donators. Um, donate ors. Businesses. Gee, we have some employees that need a certain kind of training. Could they get that at Loring County Community College? Traditional student versus non-traditional student. High school student looking to take college credit plus courses or early college students. Now, some of these groups might have the same goals, right? Uh, it doesn't matter if you are, what kind of student you are, if you're trying to figure out your schedule. It doesn't matter if you're a traditional or non-traditional student, if you're trying to figure out what time CISS 216 meets, right? Same goal, depend, regardless of the kind of student they are. But some of these might have different goals, slightly different goals. For example, a business looking to get training for their employees might not care if it's credit training or non-credit training. Right? Hey, I don't care if you have a credit Photoshop course or a non-credit Photoshop course. I just want to make sure my students know Photoshop when they're done with this. My employees know Photoshop when I'm done with this. So I guess what I'm saying is all of these could have their own sets of goals. When you look at this list, it might make you a little more sympathetic for the people that developed LC's website. Right? Because that's an awful lot of groups to please. <laughs> All right? An awful lot of groups that you would want to accommodate. All right? Now, we'll continue next time by refining what personas are and how you'll come up with one 
and so on. I do believe there is a sample persona out there on Canvas. I think I had fun with this one too. Yeah, here we go. It's under week five, example persona. So take a look at this. I might have to, after, after him leaving Cleveland, I might have to change this a little bit. All right, LeBron J, James LeBron. We changed the names to protect the innocent, as they say. Description, a father of a young man who wants to be a good basketball player. Son is in eighth grade and is on his school team. James wants, to help his, James wants to help his son improve skills as he goes into high school. Played some basketball, but not an expert. Here are the goals, and so on. This is an example of a persona. If you have not already, review the requirements, read through the requirements for the project, and review the persona, and we'll pick up next time talking about the persona. Any questions? All right, we'll see you up in lab.